everybody. And everybody ought to praise the Lord. Thank God for you watching us Facebook and YouTube. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for tuning in in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I ask everyone to turn with me to the book of John, chapter number 5, in the name of Jesus Christ. John, chapter number 5. Praise the Lord. And when we have that, we want to start at verse number 1. Amen. John chapter number five in Jesus' name. And we'll read that scripture. We got one more as well. Okay. Mark also Mark chapter five. So John chapter five and Mark chapter five. Praise the Lord. We're going to start at John. Praise the Lord. And then we're going to jump over to Mark at the Lord's will. So John chapter 5 and verse number 1. Praise the Lord. I want to read this story here. And I want to talk to you from the thought of God's mercy. Amen. God's mercy. And here in John chapter 5, we have a pool of mercy. Praise the Lord. A pool, P-O-O-L, of mercy. Sometimes I gotta spell stuff for y'all because I'm trying to pick up my accent, my North Kakalaki accent. A pool of mercy, praise the Lord. And this pool of mercy was called the Pool of Bethesda. Bethesda. And we're gonna see that word here in verse number two. Amen. And what Bethesda means is mercy. So it said the Pool of Bethesda is talking about a pool of mercy. Amen. Let's read here in verse 1. It says, After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Let's go for the Lord in prayer. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for this time and this moment. Praise the Lord. For us to be able to gather to here, gather here, and get here safely. Praise the Lord. We thank you for blessing us over the highways. Praise the Lord. In the streets. That it took us to get to this place. And if there's anyone else traveling here, Lord, I pray that they may get here safely. I ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you will let me decrease and you'll increase, Lord. So that your word may go forth and that you may use me to speak a word for somebody this morning. Hallelujah. Yeah. People in this building and the ones who may be viewing us online, I pray that you will use me as a tool. Hallelujah. And let me say the right things and use the right examples, praise the Lord, that people may understand the word and understand your love and your mercy. Hallelujah. We thank you. Hallelujah. We give you all the praise and the glory. Hallelujah. We thank you. Hallelujah, my God, for us being alive this very moment. Hallelujah. My God, we've known people who have passed away this year, hallelujah, but we thank you that we are still living, praise the Lord, and on this side of the earth, they're not six feet under. I pray, hallelujah, that folks may get saved and sanctified, hallelujah, before they die and leave this earth. We pray that our lives may be holy and impactful, that it may touch somebody else's, and that it may glorify you, our lives may glorify you who is in glory. We thank you and we give you all the praise. Bless the word this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Verse 1. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool. Amen. 
The sheep market means a gate, the sheep gate. There was a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue, Bethesda, having five porches. Praise the Lord. And Bethesda means what? Starts with the M. Mercy. Y'all must not have been listening in the first three minutes. I was talking. <laughs> Bethesda means mercy. Verse 3. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk. Amen. These were sick people. That's what impotent means. By the pool was laid a bunch of sick people. Of blind, halt, halt mean they were lame, they couldn't walk. Withered, praise the Lord, that means some people were paralyzed. Waiting for the moving of the water. Amen. Verse 4, for an angel went down at a certain season, a certain time, he went into the pool and troubled the water. He stirred up the water. Hallelujah. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made what? Was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. Praise the Lord. So these people knew at some point, we don't know the exact time that the angel is going to stir up the water or trouble the water. But we're going to sit here because we all have an issue. Praise the Lord. We all have, praise the Lord, an infirmity with our flesh. Praise the Lord. We all are blind or paralyzed or weak in our limbs where we can't even walk. Praise the Lord. But we know something is going to happen. We don't know when it's going to happen, but we're living in expectancy, expecting it to happen. And when it does, I need to get to that water first. Because whenever the angel would stir up and trouble the water, praise the Lord, the first person that steps in the water would be healed. Praise the Lord. So can you imagine people just sitting around the pool of mercy? Amen. This pool of Bethesda. Just sitting around this pool expecting, hallelujah, it to be troubled at some point. Don't know when it's going to happen, but I'm going to sit here because I know where I can get my healing. Praise the Lord. And that's how we have to do in life at times is live in expectancy. Uh, and back home in North Carolina, there was a church that we fellowshiped with. And they had a big sign behind the pulpit. And the sign said, live in expectancy. Watch it. Live in expectancy. What does that mean? Praise the Lord. That means you have a hope. Praise the Lord. There's, you hope for something. And I'm going to live in that hope. Praise the Lord. Everyone had a different issue, right? But they all knew where to go in order to get their healing. Praise the Lord. Ain't it good to know that God will have mercy on us? Now some of these people, as you read verse number 14, there was a man, praise the Lord, who couldn't walk. In verse 14, Jesus tells him, sin no more. So some of these people have the infirmity or the issues that they're having because of the sin that they were involved in. Praise the Lord. Let's read verse 14 real quick. John 5 and 14. Afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. You're healed now. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. Isn't that something? So the reason why some of us have the issues we have is because of sin. Praise the Lord. There are people who have gum cancer. And the reason they have gum cancer is because they put tobacco in their gums. God didn't cause it, but the tobacco did. Praise the Lord. Amen. There are people who have other, I'm not going to go down a whole list just to be sensitive to people's issues, but there's a, there's a whole lot of things that we do 
And the reason we have our issues is because of our own selves. Praise the Lord. But I'm so glad that there is a pool of mercy. Amen. But as we see here, look at verse 5, John 5 and 5. We see here that everybody couldn't get to the pool fast enough. Praise the Lord. Verse 5, and a certain man was there which had an infirmity 38 years. How old was this man? 38. Well, okay, I guess they don't tell us how old he was. <laughs> but they say he had the issue for how long? 38 years. 38 years. Some of us not even 38 years old. That's a long time to have an issue. And you want to be healed. Praise the Lord. If he had this issue for 38 years, Jesus, praise the Lord, the uh, history tells us he passed, he did lay down his life around age 33. So this man had an issue before Jesus even came on the scene. Amen? We don't know how old Jesus was here, but we know that this man had an issue longer than Jesus' life before his life expired. Praise the Lord. Amen. So before Jesus was even born, this man had an issue. Verse 6, when Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? Do you want to be healed? That's what Jesus was asking him. Do you want to be healed? Verse 7, the impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water's troubled to put me in the pool. Now, wait a minute. Jesus just asked you a question. Do you want to be healed? He didn't say yes. He didn't say no. Praise the Lord. He didn't give, but he gave an excuse. He gave an excuse. Do you want to be healed? Well, I mean, uh, because he, he's thinking the only way for him to be healed is to go into the pool of mercy. But he didn't realize he was talking to the God of mercy. Hallelujah. For 38 years, you have this issue and you see others getting healed, but you can't get down there fast enough because other people are quicker than you. So you have this expectancy, this hope, that maybe this day I'll do it. Maybe the next day I'll do it. Maybe the next day it'll happen. Maybe this day it'll happen. And you think that's the only way. Some of us think the only way to be healed or to be satisfied is to go to a doctor. But you forget about our God who was the first doctor. Amen. He was the first doctor. He was the first one to have open, uh, open flesh surgery. Praise the Lord. What do I mean? Back in Genesis, when God was trying to find a help me for Adam, he couldn't find a help me for Adam. But God had made all these animals from the dust, from the dirt of the ground, just like he made Adam from the dirt of the ground. But the Bible said there was no help me found. So God caused a deep sleep to come on Adam. It is like anesthesia. Praise the Lord. And God opened Adam up and took a rib out and created a woman. Open flesh, sir. God was the first doctor. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And closed them back up. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and now Adam had found to help me. Praise the Lord. Sometimes doctors can only do what doctors can do. Prescribe uh, medication. Amen. Prescriptions. Advice. Praise the Lord. And there's times where God actually heals people and takes care of people. Praise the Lord. Take care of them and then confuse the nurses and the doctors. Well, before, when we moved out here, there was a man, praise the Lord, as before we moved out here, there was a man who we first, the first person we baptized in Jesus' name, amen. This man went to the hospital and the doctor said he only have Three, I think three pints of blood in his body. The doctor said, that's a dead man. Praise the Lord. Or was it four pints? But I think he said, we said, how many pints do you have? I think he said, you have 16 pints of blood in your body. Something like that. But he said, but with 
three or four, that's a dead man. My bishop went to lunch, praise the Lord. Came back the next day, and the doctor said, I don't know what happened, but he turned the corner. <laughs> praise the Lord. The doctor didn't know what happened. But you know what we were doing? The whole time he was in there, we had prayer for him. Praise the Lord. We have Bible study on Tuesday and Wednesday nights. On Tuesday and Wednesday night, instead of Bible study, we were in prayer for that man. Hallelujah. And that man got healed and walked out of the hospital. Doctors couldn't understand it. Nurses couldn't understand it. But we have a God who's merciful. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. The brother, the, <laughs> thank you, Jesus. He can, God is awesome. Amen. Praise the Lord. So this man, Jesus says in verse 6, Wilt thou be made whole? Do you want to be healed? Verse 7, the impotent man, praise the Lord, the sick man, that's what impotent means, answered him, Sir, I have no man. When the water is troubled to put me into the pool, but while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Praise the Lord. And Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. Amen. This man thought the only way to be healed was through the pool of Bethesda. Amen. The pool of mercy. But I want to encourage everyone here today that you serve a God of mercy. What does mercy mean? Mercy is favor that you don't deserve. Hallelujah. That's what mercy is. You ain't lived your life as God wanted you to live it. Hallelujah. You've done some things that you yourself even regret. And God say, I'm going to give you a favor and you don't even deserve it. Praise the Lord. You don't deserve to wake up in the morning, but God breathes on you and say, wake up, my child. Hallelujah. My God, we serve a God, hallelujah, who loves us so much that he looks past our faults, praise the Lord, and allows us to receive salvation, hallelujah. See, these people were sick in the natural, praise the Lord, but some of us are sick in the spirit, hallelujah. You're weak in the spirit, your spirit is troubled, you can't sleep at night without taking pills and NyQuil and, and other things to suppress your flesh. Your mind is always racing, praise the Lord, and you can't even sleep at night. Your life is troubled. Hallelujah. There's things in life that makes you want to even take your own life away. Hallelujah. But I'm glad we serve a God of love and of mercy. Hallelujah. People are struggling mentally. Hallelujah. People have a hallelujah. Things that are going on in the struggle is real for them. Hallelujah. But I'm so glad that we have a God who can pick us up and turn us around. Hallelujah. I'm glad that we serve a God who has mercy on us and gives us the favor that we don't even need or even deserve. Hallelujah. We serve a God who loved and died for us. Hallelujah. So that we can be washed and our spirits can be free. Hallelujah. My God, these people, they have uh, they're paralyzed in their flesh and some of us are paralyzed paralyzed in the spirit. You don't know where to go. You don't know what to believe. You, you want to have faith in God and you're struggling within yourself of whether you should be serving Jesus or serving Allah or serving Confucius or being a devil worshiper. Hallelujah. You can even try all these different things. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And Jesus said, I'm still here stretching out my hand and want you to come into my kingdom. Praise the Lord. You try many different, hallelujah, people that you've talked to and nobody can help. You've called your friends and your best friends and you poured out all of your issues to them and all they did was run and tell other friends and family members instead of keeping it personal and keeping it a secret. I want to encourage you, praise the Lord, that you need to talk to Jesus and give him all the issues of your heart. Because this great big God that we serve is willing to hear you. His ear is not heavy that he cannot hear. His hand is not short that he cannot see. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. This God we serve is so wonderful. Hallelujah. And all we need to do is give him a try. You've tried everything else in your life. You've tried, hallelujah, drinking. You've tried doing drugs. Hallelujah. You've tried, hallelujah, slick 
taking your risk. You've tried, hallelujah, thinking about suicide, but I'm here to tell you that God don't want that for you. He don't want you to die. He wants you to live. Yes, yes, and even if you die in this flesh, you can have the Holy Spirit so that you can now live spiritually. Oh, death, where's thy sting? Oh, grave, where's thy victory? But when you receive the Holy Spirit, you conquer death. Hallelujah. And that's when Jesus died and he went into that grave. He was showing, he, when he rose from that grave, he was showing us his power, that he has power over death. Praise the Lord. And you also can have power, the victory over death. Praise the Lord. That doesn't mean you're not going to go graveyard dead. That means you're not going to end up in hell, which is the second death. Praise the Lord. You're not going to end up in the lake of fire. Praise the Lord. But I'm so glad we serve a merciful God, a graceful God, a caring God, a loving God, a compassionate God. I'm so glad that he loves us. Praise the Lord. These people in, Matt, in John chapter 5, they have issues and they're sick naturally. Verse 3 told us some of them were blind. I want to look at this spiritually also. Praise the Lord. Although they're talking about these people's natural infirmities, their natural weaknesses in their body. I want to look at this spiritually also. Praise the Lord. It says some of them are blind. But some of us are blind in the spirit. We can't see who God is. And that's why God allows us to run into the right people to witness to you so you can understand who you're praying to when you're praying. Praise the Lord. They're blind. They don't know who to serve. Amen. They don't know who to, to, to talk to. They're blind. He also said that some of them were halt. I mean, they were lame. They were weak in their limbs. Can't walk. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Some of us are like that spiritually, withered, they're paralyzed. And they were waiting for something. You see the expectation, the expectation they had? They're waiting for something. And that's how you are. You're waiting for something. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Go to Matthew, I mean Mark chapter number five. There's another woman here who had an issue. And this woman did all she could do in order to get her healing. Amen. Some of us may have uh, out there on Facebook and YouTube. Some of us, some of you may have uh, issues, praise the Lord, that you're going through in your flesh. Some may have cancer. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Some may have, amen. Sexually transmitted diseases. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Some may have be sick in their mind. Praise the Lord. I know people, thank you, Jesus, who are struggling mentally. And a mental struggle is something that is that, that weighs on people. They're so stressed out in life, they lose their appetite. So stressed out in life, their, their hair starts to thin out and, and fall out. Praise the Lord. People think that, praise the Lord, you're working out and you're eating right because you're losing so much weight. But really, all you're doing is filling your pillow with tears at night. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to know God hears your prayer. When you pray to him, thank you, Jesus. He hears us. Thank you, Jesus. And God just wants you to listen. This, this the Bible says the sufferings of this present time 
the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. You're suffering right now, but he said, listen, this is lightweight. You can't even compare this to what I have for you. Eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard of the good things that God has in store for us. Hallelujah. Eyes haven't seen it. Ears haven't heard of it. Hallelujah. Of the good things that God has in store for us. Let's take this story up here and we'll close. Mark chapter 5, verse number 25. Mark chapter number 5, verse number 25. Here is a story of a young lady who had an issue with her blood. Amen. And this issue with her blood, she tried all that she could in order to be healed of her infirmity, her weakness. Praise the Lord. Her issue. She went to every doctor she could. Well, let me not say every doctor. The Bible says she spent all that she had at the doctor. Amen. But nothing got better, but it got worse. And when after she tried all that she could, she said, I better go try Jesus. The God of mercy. Praise the Lord. Look at verse 25. Mark 5 and 25. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years. Some of y'all are not even 12 years old in here. <laughs> she had this issue for 12 years. An issue of blood. Amen. Now, really quick, just to give you a little background here. If you go to the Old Testament, I believe in the book of Leviticus, and it talks about people who have an issue of blood. Praise the Lord. Um, and when they had an issue of blood, I believe it was Leviticus chapter 15. When they had an issue of blood, they had to be separated from everyone else. People didn't want to be around you. Amen. If you touch something and somebody came and touched that thing behind you, or let me give you an example I gave in the, in the, um, in the scriptures. If you sat on a chair and had an issue of blood, and someone came and sat on that chair behind you, they had to separate themselves from everybody for seven days. Can you imagine having the issue of blood and all the gossip going around? She got an issue. She got an issue with her blood. She got an issue with her blood. And so everybody starts to separate from you, praise the Lord, until you were clean of that issue. Praise the Lord. And the Bible gave time frames of you should wash yourself and you should separate yourself for seven days and if you lay on the bed and somebody else come and touch that bed behind you, they now have to separate themselves. This issue of blood was a huge issue. Amen. So just give you a little background. Now read Leviticus chapter 15 and you'll see the issue of blood in the Old Testament and how the Jews would treat people who had this issue. Now hers wasn't just seven days. Hers was 12 years excluded, separated from people. People running away from you. Hallelujah. People want nothing to do with you because of your issue. Praise the Lord. Verse 26, and had suffered many things of many physicians. See, she did go to many different doctors and nurses, physicians, and has spent all that she had, verse 26, and has suffered many things of many physicians, and has spent all that she had, and was nothing better but what? Y'all can talk back to me. Rather grew worse. Got some quiet church mouses in here today. <laughs> but y'all some pretty mouses, though. <laughs> but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, look at verse 27. When she had heard of Jesus, she ain't see him. She did what? Heard of him. Came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be what? Whole. Just like everybody who was at that pool of Bethesda, the pool of mercy, right? 
They all wanted to go when the water was troubled. They all wanted to go get in the water so that they can be made whole. They can be healed. So this woman spent her money and many physicians. Nothing got better but rather grew worse, right? And she was at her last wits. To her, she said, you know what? I've been hearing about this man named Jesus. I've heard about how he healed many people. I've heard about, praise the Lord, how he turned the water into wine. I've heard about, praise the Lord, these other things, these miracles that he has done. If he's doing that for many people, he can do something for me. Praise the Lord. So her not even seeing him, she just heard about him. The Bible says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Praise the Lord. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Praise the Lord. So if you want to gain some faith, you got to hear. So she said within herself, you know what? If I touch his clothes, I'm going to be healed. She didn't say if he touched me, I'll be healed. If he lay hands on me, I'll be healed. She said if I just touch his clothes. Amen. I believe there's another scripture that said the hem of his garment. I believe it said that as well. Which said, if I touch his garment, he'll be, I'll be made whole. Look at verse 29. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. How many know God can heal us? Amen. Just like people at the pool of Bethesda, the pool of mercy. They thought the only way to get healed was by the pool. That was the popular place. But Jesus said, let me come and stir some things up myself. Do you want to be whole? Do you want to be healed? He said, take up your bed. All you do is speak the word. Take up your bed. Praise the Lord. The man took up his bed and started walking. And, and, and the Jews had such a strict law of what they could do on the Sabbath. They couldn't even carry things on the Sabbath. He couldn't even carry his bed. He wasn't even supposed to carry his bed on the Sabbath. So the people said, why are you carrying your bed? If you go back and read John 5, they said, why are you carrying your bed? It's the Sabbath. He said, that man healed me and told me to pick it up and go. Who healed you? And he finally got around and told him Jesus did it. <laughs> so now the people got mad at Jesus. Praise the Lord. They wanted to stone Jesus and kill Jesus because of the things Jesus would do. Amen. But they need to understand that they were certain that, that he was the Lord of the Sabbath. He could do what he wanted. Look at verse 20, I mean number 30, verse 30, Mark 5 and 30. Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? All right. So now we see more of a picture here, right? She wanted to go and touch his garment so she can be healed, but it sounds like there's a crowd around Jesus. There's a bunch of people thronging up against him, pressed up against him. So he turns around and says, who touched my clothes? Verse 31, and his disciples said unto him, thou seest the multitude, you see these great number of people around us, Jesus, thronging thee, and sayest thou, who touched me? You ask me, everybody touching you, Jesus? <laughs> what do you mean, who touched me? All these people around here, we're all thronging up against you, bumping up against you. What do you mean? Verse 32, and he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. See, everybody was touching him, but there was one person who touched him by faith. She touched him by faith. Praise the Lord. Verse 33, but the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her. Now, she had had this issue for 12 years, and now she feels her healing has happened. She felt that thing. Hallelujah. Woo! Thank you. Hallelujah. Sometimes you might not feel your healing, but God can heal you. Hallelujah. And you might not find out about your healing until the doctor going to check you up again. Praise the Lord. God can do it. Hallelujah. And sometimes God may allow you to feel it. Hallelujah. And you feel better about yourself. You say, I ain't going back to that doctor no more because I know that I feel better because my faith is telling me I feel better and God has proved it to me. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. But the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. 
Verse 34, and he said unto her, Daughter, now look at this, daughter. <laughs> he got intimate with her, didn't he? Don't even know the woman. Well, she don't know him, but he know her. <laughs> daughter, thy faith. Not my clothes, not my garment, but thy what? Faith. Thy faith. See, the power wasn't in his clothes, was it? The power was in what? Her faith. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace. Hmm? And be whole of thy plague. Your affliction. Go in peace. And be whole of thy plague. While he yet spoke, spake, there came from the rulers of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? So Jesus was actually on his way to go and meet another man's daughter who was about to die. And all these people were following him to this man's house. And then she got healed. And during this time, they said, the daughter dead. You don't need to go no further. My daughter is dead. Verse 36, as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue. Now the synagogue is what we call a church. We say, come to church with me. Come to our worship center. The synagogue is what Jews call their worship centers. He said unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. Look at that. Here we go. Talk about faith again, right? Don't be afraid. Only believe. See, some of us have issues. When you walk into your, your doctor's office, you need to go in there stepping on faith. You know what? It's going to be a different story today. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. It's going to be a different story today. I've been coming to this doctor for two years and he keeps telling me the same thing but you know what today is different I'm walking in his office by faith I'm going to get some better news today praise the Lord verse 37 and he suffered no man to follow him save Peter except Peter the word save means accept save Peter and James and John the brother of James and he come into the house of the ruler of the synagogue and see of the tumult and them that wept and wailed greatly because somebody had passed away so they're grieving verse 39 and when he was come in he said unto them why make ye this ado and weep why are y'all making all this commotion that's what ado means you're making all this commotion and crying the damsel which means the young daughter the child the damsel is not dead, but what? Sleeping. And they laughed him to scorn. But when he had put them all out, you see, sometimes you got to get people away from you that ain't meaning no good for you. Huh? You, you, you focused on another chapter in your life and another, uh, uh, another chapter in your life and you got people that just want to keep you uh, feeling bad. Praise the Lord. Sometimes you got to get all the people who's causing the commotion, get them away from you. Amen. And sometimes it's okay to be alone as long as you get yourself right with God. Sometimes you need to get alone so you can get right with God. Then you step out a new creature, a new individual. Amen. Saved and sanctified. But when he had put them all out, he taketh the father and the mother of the damsel and them that were with him and entered in where the damsel was lying. And he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Talitha kumi, which is being interpreted, damsel, I say unto thee, arise. Praise the Lord. Verse 42, and we'll get ready to close at 43. And straightway the damsel arose and walked. For she was of the age of 12 years. Something with this number 12. What's going on with this number 12, Jesus? One more the issue of blood for 12 years. Praise the Lord. So she had the issue of blood the same amount of time the child had been born. Ain't that something? Praise the Lord. 
And they were astonished with a great astonishment. They were amazed. And he charged them straightly that no man should know it. And commanded that something should be given her to eat. So on this journey on to her house, Jesus does two miracles. Heals the damsel, the young child that was 12 years old. And also heals the woman who had an issue of blood for 12 years. A merciful God. Praise the Lord. Don't get caught up on the pool of mercy. The pool of Bethesda. Because you got a God, Jesus, who can do great miracles. Amen. Don't get caught here. We'll close with this. Don't get caught up with the pool of mercy, but get caught up with the God of mercy. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank God for you, Facebook and YouTube. God bless you. I hope I said something to help you and to encourage you in the name of Jesus Christ. If you want to support this ministry, I encourage you to go to our website, www.newransomjesuschurch.com, and you can find how to support this ministry in Jesus' name. God bless you, and may heaven smile upon you.